Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, we're going to be creating a whole network of interconnected icons. I've seen this a lot in people's work where they want to show how connected businesses are or what apps do and all this great stuff. We're going to make use of an icon pack from rocketstock.com, which you can pick up as a freebie. So let's have a look at what we're making, and then you can go grab some files and follow along. So the first thing you want to do is head on over to Rocket Stock and get yourself the Technicons free animated business icons. This is sort of a sampler, it's 30 free animated icons, part of a larger pack, but these ones are free, so you can follow along. And they work really well to illustrate this kind of thing. And if you're working with some of your own icons, if you're drawing your own assets, this will work as well. But check out the Technicons, they're pretty dope. So. The first thing you want to do is download that, open it up, and then we're going to go into After Effects and we're going to import them. There's many ways to do that, but I recommend kind of going through, sort of previewing the things and picking the ones you want and bringing just those in. You can grab them all and bring them all in too if you want, that's totally fine. But you don't really need all of them, unless you do. Maybe you do need all of them. We're just going to grab a handful and, and play around here. The first thing I want to do is pre-compose the things I want to use. Let's get to dragging, say, number one here onto its own composition, which will create a composition that is the size, duration, frame rate of the thing. So in this case, it's going to last for all of 10 seconds, and uh, you can play through. You can see that this is a fun very detailed camera, and you can move this around, change its timing, do all sorts of stuff. In fact, that's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna select the layer, I'm gonna go layer, time, and we're gonna time stretch. We're gonna time stretch this stuff. So we're gonna time stretch it, and the stretch factor, we're going to sort of increase, uh, increase the speed, stretching it 50%, meaning we're actually squishing it, and we're gonna have the layer in point hold in place, and you can see that this now gets shorter, but it comes on much faster. And that's perfectly fine for us. But what we're gonna wanna do is go to the end here when it's gone all the way, hit N, and we're gonna trim the comp to the work area. So we've got, got this thing coming and going, and the composition is the whole length uh, of this thing. So that's wonderful. We're then gonna rename it, selecting it in the project. We're gonna call it uh, camera icon which is pretty great. So now we are going to sort of have a little bubble come up behind it. We want a little bit of a canvas, a little bit of a delineation between the icon and whatever background we put it on. So I'm gonna double click on the circle, which is gonna create an ellipse that's the exact same size as our canvas. I'm gonna to move to about 20 frames in, and I'm gonna twirl into the ellipse, twirl into the ellipse path, and hit a keyframe, because this is the size I want this thing to end as. I want it to end at that size. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, and I'm gonna set this to zero. I'd like it to start at, at zero, I'm, you know, no size at all. I'm gonna grab those frames, I'm gonna ease them by hitting F9, I'm gonna go into the graph editor, and I'm looking here at a value graph. So we're at 350 units. I'm gonna drag that handle this way, and we're gonna grab this other handle at the start and pull it up like this. So this thing is actually gonna get bigger bigger than 350 units and then get smaller. And finally, I'm gonna take that and move it behind the camera and rename it again by hitting return after selecting the layer and we're gonna call this background circle, just so we know exactly what it is. You might wanna put in strokes or something around it. This is a good spot to do those things, do those things here in the camera icon Pre -comp. We don't just need cameras, it's not just a network of cameras connected to other cameras, it could be. But for us, we want some more things, so I'm going to duplicate that, making camera icon 2. I'm going to double click on it, which means that's what's open now. Take the graph editor off, and I'm going to go to 01.mov. I'm going to hold down Alt, I'm going to grab 02.mov and drag it on top. And you see that little plus sign? That means I'm replacing, I'm replacing 01.mov with 02.mov, which is this nice icon of like a chat, a chat on a phone going on. So now I'm gonna rename camera icon two as, I don't know, phone chat icon. 
So now we've got two of these and we'll just do it a third time and you can do this as many times as you want. So we're gonna do this with number three. So we duplicate one of the things we've already made. We open it up, we replace zero two with zero three, holding down alt and we get this SD card. You could do it with zero five instead, this battery, zero six, this USB plug, 09, a USB, any of them, it works for anything. And you could even replace this with all sorts of pictures or artwork or anything. It doesn't really matter. But in this case, we're using the beautiful Technicons. So then we rename phone chat icon to, to something we'll remember. Um, hopefully we'll remember calling this a uh, USB icon. Now I think we're ready to start making our interconnected network. So we're gonna create a new composition and let's call this uh, network. Let's do that. And it's gonna be 1920 by 1080, frame rate is 29.97. And we're using that frame rate because that is the frame rate of the Technicons. So you kinda of wanna keep all of your frame rates harmonized between compositions. The duration is gonna be 10 seconds, which is pretty good. Background color black. Doesn't really matter, and we're gonna hit okay. My background isn't black, it's transparent because I've got the transparency grid on. And in fact, I would like to make a new solid, make a nice dark blue solid, and we're gonna hit okay, and that's gonna serve as our background. Just because the icons are light, we're using a little light bubble behind them, we want things to stand out. So now I'm going to bring out, maybe our network is gonna start with the phone chat. Maybe we bring that out, just put it in the center like this. And you can see right away there are a few issues with this thing. Uh, one, our circle is getting cut off, so we're just gonna hit the Collapse Transformations button, and that allows all of the sharpness, all of the things that are inside here to kind of bleed through the edges. It's, it's collapsing the transformations, and it's allowing us to even see the things that go beyond the outside of the composition. Something else that is limiting about this is that you'll notice this thing comes on, and then it goes away too soon. We only have five seconds of this thing. So what I'd like to do is to select this layer. We're gonna go layer, time, enable time remapping. I'm gonna go ahead to when uh, this animation has resolved itself. Looks like it's all done at one second. I'm gonna set a keyframe there. Then I'm gonna delete this keyframe at the end. And then I can move this ahead as much as I want. And this thing will stay on at this frame. It'll just come on and it'll stay there forever and ever always. Something else I'd like this thing to do is to sort of float around in space a little bit. And I want it to do that automatically. So I'm gonna hit P to call up its position. I'm gonna hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch. And then I'm gonna type an expression. And that expression is gonna be wiggle, W-I-G-G-L-E, a couple of round brackets. And inside the brackets, I'm gonna first say how often I want it to wiggle. Well, I'd like it to wiggle 0.1 times a second, which means basically do it once every 10 seconds. And then I'm going to say uh, what magnitude, how much, how far, and that's going to be uh, 100, 100 pixels. So 0.1 comma 100 inside the brackets, we hit enter and you can see this thing is now kind of floating around, which is pretty nice. As well as floating around, I'd like it to kind of scale a little bit. So I'm gonna take this wiggle, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna hold down alt, click on scale and paste it in here. Now that is creating something very different. You see that it's stretching and, and being weird. Uh, we don't want that. And that's because it's wiggling both the X and the Y, the horizontal and vertical independently. We need to stop that. So to do that, I could say X equals wiggle this. And then in square brackets, I'm gonna make a zero which is saying, uh, give me only the first part. So right now the wiggle is trying to operate on both parts, both the X and the Y, and I'm saying only give me the X part, and that's what the zero is doing. Then I hit the, uh, hit the little semicolon to end that line, and then we're gonna go inside square brackets, X comma X, meaning put this number, this variable we've created and named X into these two spaces. And as you can see, now they're both the same number. And that's very good. Uh, something that's a little bit off though is 100 is too big. Let's change that down to 10 maybe. Let's see if that if that's enough variance for us. Uh, and I think it is, I think that's perfectly good. Uh, but the good thing about these wiggle expressions is I'm able to scale this down if I want, I'm able to move this if I want, I can do so much wonderful stuff and all of its motion is gonna be automatic so I don't have to do anything else. So that's our first icon. Let's have it come on at 10 seconds. Let's just move this ahead to 10 seconds. It comes on. 
then we want a line to go from it to another icon, and then it will come on. So let's duplicate the phone chat icon and then replace it, replace that duplication with maybe the USB icon or you know, maybe, uh, maybe you could use the camera icon. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. It might matter for yours. And then we'll just drag it out to somewhere else and we'll move it ahead in time. Move it ahead, maybe to two seconds. We'll change it later. So this phone comes on and then the camera comes on. We want the two of them to be connected. So we're gonna use a script for that. The script we're using comes from Motion Boutique. So Motion Boutique, if you go to aescripts.com, check out the Connect Layers plugin. It's available at name your own price pricing. And what it'll do is it's gonna draw lines between layers and the lines will always touch the layers. So the way it works is you select the layers you wanna connect. After you've got the scripts downloaded, you would then go file, script, and then run a script file. I've got it in my recent files, so I'm just gonna go and run it, which creates this little user interface that pops up. You can go to the options, you can change a bunch of options about this stuff, and that's all wonderful. But we're using it in a very basic way. We're just using it to draw lines. So I'm gonna hit the tree version, and when I hit that, it's creating this shape layer with a line that goes between these two things. Now I'll just close that. We don't need to look at that for now. If we open up this joint that connects the camera icon to the phone chat icon, we can twirl down, we can twirl into the contents, we can twirl into the joint, and we can twirl into the joint path here. And it's showing us that it's created a rectangle, which is fun. Uh, even though it looks like a line, it's just a very thin rectangle. And on that rectangle, we have a stroke. And let's make that stroke like a 10, 10 point stroke. And we'll change the line cap to be a round cap and round join so that everything is nice and round. And it's also got a trim paths on it. And you can see the trim paths starts at 0.1 and it ends at 50. So what we're gonna do is set a keyframe, move that keyframe into the future. And its first keyframe is going to be zero. So it's gonna start as a little dot and then it's gonna move forward and animate on like that. So this will only take about 10 frames and we're gonna easy ease both ends of that. And now we're just gonna move this layer ahead in time. So this phone comes on and then we'll have this line emanate from it. And when it comes to rest here, we would like the other layer to start coming on and we'll just put that joint behind everything. And then it does that. So let's look at what we've created. Just rendering that real quick, just like that. And they're really, they're doing it. And the line will always connect the two, which is important because we're using that script and it's created a lot of very advanced math. Now we just need to create the rest of the things. So maybe what we'll do is we'll duplicate the camera icon a couple times. We'll move its, its duplications out into the world maybe duplicate it another time. You'll notice that every time we add another layer, the layer index is changing, and so our wiggle is refreshing and putting things in new places, um, which can be difficult, but it's one of the things we just have to work around. I'm gonna to wanna to connect all of these. I wanna connect the camera to the camera to the camera to the camera. I want them all to connect to each other. So again, we're gonna go file, script, you know, run that connect layers script, and we're gonna hit triangulation. And what triangulation has done is created triangles by connecting all these things together. It's actually created more than we need. We don't really want to connect these two things together. I don't really care to connect those two things together. I don't care to connect those two things together either. I just want these three lines. And I'm just gonna grab those three lines we're gonna set their stroke up like this. We're gonna move them below. We might recolor them just so we can keep everything kind of separate, move them ahead in time a little bit. And we're going to go in here. I'm gonna hit UU. I'm gonna copy the keyframes we used on the trim paths. Then we're gonna go into these layers. I'm gonna hit UU again, move my playhead to the start of the layers and find all of the trim path end things and just paste and just paste in there. So find it and paste it. Good. So we got those two. Then we'll go here, find and paste. Good. So now we're just going to look at what that looks like. It looks like everything's coming from this camera except this one. And this can happen to you. So the way we're going to get around that is we're going to go in here. 
We are going to go down to the trim paths. We're gonna to go to the offset and just type in 180. We're gonna offset that path by 180 and that'll make it all come from the center. And I think that's working out quite nicely. So that camera comes on and then we can start having lines come out from that. Something that's nice to do is just kind of offset each of these lines a little bit in time. So maybe one of them comes on first and then the others kind of come out from it. And as each of them kind of terminates, you know, that's when uh, each of these will, these layers kind of start. So it's gonna go there and then it's going to go, it's gonna go up. So this one will be there, this one will be there. And then just grab those layers and move them ahead in time a little bit. And I think that kind of works. Uh, no, not quite, because I grabbed the wrong layers. <laughs> Silly me. But, uh, you know, that happens to everybody. Happens to everybody sometimes. It certainly happens to me. So there we go. We've got this coming on. This, this. Oh, and this one needs to move ahead in time a little bit. Wait for it. And I think that's working out quite nicely. So let's have a look. You might need to reposition these just a little bit. Make sure everything is where you want them. If you decide later, oh, I don't really like this icon, you can always swap it just like this. Just swapping it out, grabbing it, holding down Alt and dragging it in, and we're changing things up just like this. If you want to expand this network, making it bigger, making it grander, you can just keep repeating this process over and over again. There are 30 icons to play with in the Technicons pack, so you'll enjoy playing with each of those. Now, in our example, we had the network later collapse in on itself. So it all kind of came back into the middle and bleep, kind of went away. So in order to do that, what we did was we had everything return to the center and then had the middle icon kind of get really big and absorb everything. So let's say at four seconds, we're going to have everything come into the middle. Let's do that. So we're going to grab all of the things, we're gonna grab their position, we're gonna set keyframes on them, we're just gonna move ahead 10 seconds, we're gonna say, all right, everybody, you're all going to 960 by 540, you're all going in there, and this top icon, you're gonna get very big. So we're gonna hold down Shift, hit S, call up its scale, and so its scale is gonna go from where it is there to getting, getting super big, nice and big like this, before uh, collapsing down and becoming you know, zero like that. So let's have a look at, at what that looks like. And then we'll just adjust that's coming together. Okay. So we're going to grab these, we're going to ease them, grab these, ease those two, go into the graph editor, we're gonna edit the speed graph. Everything's going to just come together. Then this is going to hang out for a bit before getting small, whoop, like that. And we just make sure that every other layer kind of goes away once they're all covered up. So it comes together and then it's gone just like that. So let's play that back. Something comes on, it connects, it connects, connects, and then boom in and gone. And just like that, you are done. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Evan Abrams for Premium Beat. Go to Rocketstock, get those Technicons. Uh, if you want to download the project file for this, it is available. Uh, links on this page are in the description to where you can get those things. Head on over to Premium Beat to uh, get the music that you've been enjoying uh, for this thing. And if you want to see more tutorials, subscribe to Premium Beat in all of its forms on the Twitter, on the YouTube, all over the place. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.